as we offer up this praise unto your name. So we live, so we lift our hands. Tell them how much you love him and we lift our hearts as we offer up this praise unto your name. God loves corporate worship. As we offer, as we offer up this praise unto your name. As we offer, ooh, yeah, to your name. As we offer, that I might see all your goodness, grace, and power. Come on in, Holy Ghost. Stand beside me every hour. Be my drink, be my living bread. Keep me sheltered, keep me So completely free beside Jordan, make my bed in God's bosom, lay my head. Let me live in a brand new place to see my blessed Savior's face. Holy Can you help me say, Holy Spirit dwell in me? Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit dwell in me. I can't move without him. Come on, Holy Spirit. Holy, you're touching and agreeing with me because my flesh can't move. Dwell in me. Bless the Lord in this place. Come on, make it your best praise. No, I said make it your best praise. Make it your best praise. Give God great praise. Give God great praise. Give God great praise. Hallelujah to you. It's to you, God. Hallelujah to you. It's to you, God. Hallelujah to you. It's to you, God. Hallelujah! 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 Let me lift it up higher! Hallelujah! 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 He's worthy! Oh, shut up, I won't shut He's worthy! He's worthy to be praised! You're worthy! I can't move without him! I can't eat without him. I can't think without him. I can't breathe without him. I can't keep this flesh under control without him. I can't keep my right mind without him. Oh God, how I need thee every day, every hour. Oh, I need thee. Oh, I need thee, God. Not some of me 
and some of you, not the co-pilot. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You drive. You drive this thing, God, because you know the direction that you want this to go in. I'm the back seat. I'm not even the back seat driver. I'm the back seat passenger, God. Do whatever you want to do in this place. Say whatever you want to say in this place. Have your way with authority, with dominion, with power, in love, and in spirit, and in truth. Let no flesh be a sin, but you be glorified. I don't want the glory. You take the glory, God. And when it's all said and done, to God be the glory. For the things, hallelujah. For the things he's done, hallelujah. If that great thing, I don't take it for granted. That you're so awesome. I don't take it for granted. You're all together lovely. You're all together wealthy. You're all together wonderful to me. And I know when I preach, that's a form of worship because I'm obeying you. So here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down, God. Oh, God, I declare you're holy. Only you are holy. And my holiness and righteousness is hidden in you. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing and acceptable in your sight. Oh, God, you take over. You know the plans you have for your people in this house. Equipped, empower, provoke, stir up, tear down, destroy, remove, purify, burn out. I'm not afraid and ashamed of the gospel. Do whatever you want to do. Say whatever you want to say. How you want to say it. You're God. You're God. You're God. Hallelujah. Do what you do so well, O King. We'll be ever so careful to give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise in Jesus' name. If you believe that, put your hands together and bless him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I don't count it lightly to stand before you behind this sacred desk that symbolizes that, first and foremost, whatever word that is being ministered, it's being ministered to the person that's behind this sacred desk first. So don't ever get it twisted. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, don't get it twisted. Because it comes to the one who's behind this sacred desk first. So please believe me that all have sinned and come short of his glory. And nobody's here to judge anybody. Amen. So that's my disclaimer. But if he want to cut it out, spit it out, burn it out, whatever he wants to do. And if it hits you, just look at yourself and say, ouch. Amen. Just say, ouch to yourself. Amen. Because sometimes you just got to talk to yourself. Amen. Because sometimes I do that. You know, and one thing you don't want to do, you don't want to have to talk to yourself after the fact. Right. After you've already been in your flesh. Right. Now, here, what in the world? That was just so stupid. Why did you do that? Yeah, 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 yeah. Why did you say that? You yeah. know. But you know what that is? That is, warning comes before destruction. Yeah. Amen. That's a scripture. I didn't say it. God said it. Amen. Yeah. And so, we ignore the Holy Spirit sometimes. And, and sometimes when the Holy Spirit says, no, answer that phone call. Well, it's so-and-so. It might be important. Don't answer that call. And what do you do? You answer the call, and then it comes to distract you. It comes to deter you. It comes to cause you to get outside of the will of God. Because we all do know that sin separates us from him, right? And so we are talking about um, all month character we're talking about for the theme for pastor's banquet was uh, his presence is the greatest present well his presence is the greatest present and, and character is important and there's one thing that's in there that's so important that will help you with both look at your neighbor and say neighbor, neighbor. you need self control uh huh uh huh I'm going to say ouch ouchie 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 for myself because there are times when a person can just poke, 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 
and poke at you to aggravate. Even Jesus got aggravated in the Bible, did he not? And then he had to just cast that thing out because it got on his nerves. So, okay, but, but what did he use? He used his spirit, not his flesh. God help me in here. You got to operate according to the spirit because you can't gratify the things of the spirit unless you're in the spirit, right? That's what the Bible says. Gratify the things of the spirit, those that are in the spirit. When you gratify the things of the flesh, you're in the flesh. So we want to live according to the spirit as Romans chapter 8 says. Live according to the spirit so that we do not gratify the things of the flesh. Amen. What, 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 what are we talking about here? Self-control. The first one of the first things that he told me <laughs> about self-control is be slow to speak, oh, yeah. quick to hear, yeah. slow to anger. Yeah. That's self-control. God help me in here. No, no, no. It's self-control. My God, I'm already preaching. And when you come from a slick tongue, and from a past that tells you that you got to defend yourself by all means because ain't nobody going to protect you like you. Ain't nobody going to stand up for you like you because you know you had your insecurities and your issues because your past told you because this happened to you, you can't depend on nobody but you. So you got to say what you got to say, okay? You got to shoot from the hip. And if they don't like it, that's too bad. But then when you come under God, oh my God, and he shows you another way, he said, baby, I understand your hurts and your pains, but we're going to get rid of that thing. Because there's a better way, there's a different way, and there's a new way of doing things. And I'm going to show you that way. And so even as I work my internship in counseling, I often ask all my clients, no matter what measure they're coming in for, well, what were you doing before that was helping work for you, that would calm you down, or that would help you have peace, or, or that would help you understand things better, or help you process, or help you keep your emotions in check? And a lot of them, because I work in a Christian facility, they say, well, you know, I would read my Bible and I would, you know, I would pray, you know, and I would just encourage myself through the Lord and say what he says about me. And I would worship and I would sing. I said, well, that's awesome. So what happened? And, and they say, well, you know what? I, I guess I kind of lost my way. I said, so tell me you lost your way. So tell me that when you stopped doing those things, what happened? Well, I became anxious. I became depressed. I became angry. I became resentful. I be walked in unforgiveness. Um, I, I, I just stopped going to church altogether. And, and I just felt empty. I didn't feel alive. I didn't feel myself. Well, that's what happens when you disconnect from the presence of the Lord. And your flesh will tell you to do that. Your flesh will have you going to the left when God said go to the right. That's why the Bible said broad is the way of destruction. But narrow is the gate. It's very narrow, okay? And it is not like you can't do it. It's not so narrow that it cannot be accomplished because Jesus himself was the epitome of self-control. And as last time I checked, he said greater works. It's not just about doing the signs and wonders, but the greater works of the fruit and everything else that go with it. And so if he did it, you made in his image and likeness. So look at your name and say, neighbor. neighbor. It's your responsibility to do it. So self-control. We're still talking about self-control. We're going to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 9. Verse 24 through 25. And I really had to meditate on this for a good two months while I was just uh, trying to recuperate from surgery. And this is when he started ministering this to me a couple of months ago about self-control. And I actually just thought it was for me. And I said, well, maybe this word is just, you know, something he's given me to to equip me because sometimes God knows what we need when we need it, how we need it. Oh, yeah. Not sometimes, but all the time. And so he'll work on those things that 
that we need strengthening in. Amen. Amen. And so I just thought that this was a personal teaching moment uh, just for me. Um, and then I said, well, Lord, what do you have for the people? And he said, I got the same thing for them that I got for you. <laughs> Self-control. And so I'm going to read this. And if you so desire to, if you're able to, please stand to reverence God's word. Amen. If you're able to. If not, we understand. If you need a minute, say, wait a minute. If you got it, amen. Okay. I'm sorry, not 2 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians, I'm sorry. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 24, 25. And I'm going to probably read 26 and 27 as well. Okay. And it reads, And every man that striveth for the mastery. Look at your neighbor say, you need to master in self-control. Is temperate in all things. That's what self-control means. It means temperate. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown. But we, look at your neighbor say, we is us. An incorruptible. I therefore so run, not as uncertainly, we got a focus, we got a goal, we got a plan. So fight I not as one that beateth the air. But I keep under my body and bring it under subjection. Lest that by any means, now my God, this right here, it just like to knock me out over the head. Because I knew he was talking to me right here. We got to watch ourselves too, y'all. We not exempt. But I keep under my body and bring it under subjection. Lest that by any means, when I have preached, come on here, to others, I myself should not. Be cast away. You may take your seats and the word of the Lord is blessed. So let me just start off with this before we hit the ouchie part, okay? Let me hit my own ouchie. It said that I have to keep my body under subjection. Keep it and bring it. Keep it under. Keep it under. Keep it subdued. Keep it humbled. Under subjection to what? To the Spirit of God, the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. That when I when I preach to others, and, and 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 it's not just talking about us as preachers, okay? So so, but but this hit me in that way. But it's talking to anybody that has uh, the boldness and the authority to tell somebody about somebody that can save anybody. So that's yeah. all of us yeah. that go out into the world and preach the gospel and spread yeah. the good news of Jesus Christ. We are held to a high standard. So we cannot afford to be hypocrites. We cannot afford to not live this that we're talking about right here. <laughs> we must get to a place in God that we go beyond religion into relationship. Well, what's the difference? Glad you asked. Thank you. Relationship is I come to church because grandmother drugged me all those years. And it is something that is just an automatic that I do because I've always done it. I always come in the church. I always speak to the people. I always sit at the back pew. And then between the hours of 12.45 and 1 o'clock, I always go back home. And I always go back and do the same stuff I was doing. I go back to cussing in the street. I go back to listening to everything I was listening to. I get back to gossiping and talking about folks like I was doing before. And I just go back to just corrupting my mind with so much of the world that it, it don't even have room for God. Oh, my God. That hurt. And God doesn't have a problem with you enjoying some of the things in this world as long as you're not of it. When you become consumed by what you're listening to and all of a sudden you get out of character and you slip and cuss or you do this or you do that, then you might need to reevaluate what you got going on. Now, I'm just talking about me. Okay? I'm just, I, I'm just talking about me. So, I used to love to watch, and I'm just talking about me, okay? I used to love to watch The Real Housewives of Atlanta. <laughs> and it didn't interfere with church, amen, because it was, it was on on Sundays, and it still is. 
and then I would watch Love and Hip Hop yeah. Hollywood. <laughs> then I would watch Love and Hip Hop Atlanta. Yeah. I'm just I'm just being real, okay? Yeah. So I'm watching all of this, seeing all of this drama, oh. all this fighting and cussing yeah. and and this this indignant stuff, thinking that you know I got it all under control, and just evaluating them and analyzing them, like child, what is going on in her head, and what's going on in his head, and just really enjoying it. And then one day, I realized something. Somebody called me on the phone to push a button, and people will do that intentionally. And I was just going in. I was going off. I wasn't cussing. But I could just feel my anger rising. I mean, it was just rising like, you know, and what? You know, what? That kind of thing. And so I said, what in the world is going on up in here? What is going on? And so I realized, because the Holy Spirit said, even when I was in my time of fasting this week, which, by the way, is one way to put your body under subjection and self-control. Anybody know that that's the most prudent and powerful way of doing it? Because you be hungry, amen, right? Your stomach be growling, don't it? Then, then you get to the point where you got hunger pains. But when you get to a place of discipline, because that's what self-control is, it's discipline. Your body knows what you're about to do. And when you focus on the word of God during this time and nothing else. Then God has a way through his grace and mercy yes. of sustaining you to do what he's asking you to do. Yes. And so during my day of fasting this week, he quickly let me know, yeah, you fasting this way with nothing for 24 hours, but I don't want you watching none of that stuff. No TV stuff. I want it to be just you and me. And so I pose the question to my family. Is God getting that you and me time or is everything else vying for your attention and gaining it more than he is? That's good. Because God can only operate us to the capacity in which he dwells. Oh my God, I'm saying something right there. He can only operate in the capacity in which he dwells. So if you make a large tent, it said enlarge your tent, stretch your pegs, that can only be done the more the greater is in you. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. The only way that's possible is that I continue to put the greater in me. He got to continue to live, breathe, dwell in me every day. I don't care. I tell my clients, I don't care if it's 10 or 15 minutes, if that's how you start. And pastor always often tells us it's not important when you start, it's that you start. Yeah. And so you can do it for 10 or 15 minutes. Get the word of God and, and, and just begin to study every day. Every day you digest and a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more. And you'll find that the more you dig in deep, because he says, seek me while I may be found. The deeper you dig and dive, the more deeper you become involved and you become engulfed. And then it becomes exciting and then it becomes revelatory. And then you start to see things that you never saw before. And then he just begins to open up to you like he's never done before. And the revelation and the sweet communion with him, the connectivity, the charge that it is to be spirit to spirit. No electricity company, no TXU can compare to the divine connectivity to heaven. And it's something about that connectivity that God begins to reveal the needs of his people to you. Not just your family, but the needs of this country the needs of your fellow man, even the needs of people in the house. Yeah. It's called intercession. Yeah. So when you begin to do what God is calling you to do, he takes you to deeper depths and realms in him that you may never have done before because a lot of times self-control is uh, meaning uh, putting yourself in control, yeah. subjecting yourself to being under control, controlling oneself. That's what we believe. That's what Webster says. But that's not, that's not what the Hebrew says. The Hebrew says that it's, it's putting yourself under control, but not alone. 
because we cannot do it alone. We have to do it by the Holy Ghost. That is our director. That is our guide. Self-control is accountability. Oh, that word right there. Accountability of self. That in itself going to preach because people don't like to be accountable for their behavior, for their actions. They always have a way to justify the means. God help me in this. I'm just talking about me. I'm just talking about me. I've done it before. Well, you know what? I, I don't feel good. They know that this is going on with me. So I'm justified to be at home. I can, I can be at home. But God said obedience is greater than sacrifice. If you do what I tell you to do, then I will take care of you. So we need to stop that. We've got to stop that. We've got to be accountable to self. That's self-control. If we say we're going to be somewhere, be somewhere. God help me in here. If we say we're going to do something, Let's be found guilty of doing whatever we said we were going to do. As pastor often reminds us, I'd rather turn you down than let you down. So if I cannot do it, I can't do it. And a lot of people have difficulty with this. And let me explain why. And this is not everybody, but this is some. There are people who have difficulties with confrontation. Oh, yeah. And to them, confrontation in itself, to even say that word, it's, it's oh my God, not confrontation. Confrontation doesn't necessarily mean that you're combating. It's, it's not combating. It's not arguing with people. It's being able to deal with a situation at hand yeah. and not shy away from it and try to avoid it because it's uncomfortable for you. But the Bible says, let your yay be yay and your nay be nay. God help me in here. So if you can't do it, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, have enough integrity to just tell me you can't. And that's it. That's it. That's all. And I learned something from one of my clients. And I tell them, you know what? I learned something from y'all. Y'all think that, you know, y'all just learning from me. But I learned from you. And so I took this and I said, you know what? To this particular client, I'm going to take that and use that. For myself because there's a such thing called in your self-control having self-control is also having boundaries yeah. knowing what you can do and what you cannot do okay we can do all things through Christ that strengthens us but there's still a balance because if I'm over here trying to do this this right here and I'm over here trying to do this right here and trying to be every woman and doing everything for everybody but I'm bankrupt in myself, then I'm of no service to anybody. And like I tell them, if I'm doing all of that for you and doing nothing for me, then I got to check my motives and see why I'm doing it in the first place because I obviously need affirmation or something from you for me to put myself on the back burner, which by the way is unhealthy self-esteem, to be everything for everybody else. No, 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 no. I won't do that. Self-control tells me that I'm able to do some things but when I know that I cannot do it for you, I just need to let you know that I cannot do it at this right. time. Yeah. And my word that I got from my client is I don't have the capacity yeah. to do it right now. Yeah. That's my answer to you. Yeah. And that keeps me whole. Because that's what God wants for us. For us to be whole. Mind, body, soul, and spirit. That's self-control. Yeah. In every area. In your body. Ooh, we're going to be ouch right there. Yeah. It's coming. And it's going to be the mind. You know, we, we got to control this thing called the mind. We have the power to control that. Do we not? He said, cast down imaginations. He didn't say, you know, maybe you could. He didn't say, uh, you know, if you, if you think you can do it, try to cast these down. That was a command. Cast it down. Shut it down. So when it's coming and you hear the chatter, I told my clients, no matter who it is, we all hear chatter. Doesn't make us insane, but the enemy likes to talk to everybody. He likes to come to try to remind you of where you were and what you were doing and and who you ain't going to be because of what you were. And so uh, you ain't got no rights to do this because of what you were and who you think you are. Who you think you're going to tell that to because of what you were. But what I read... 
casting that thought down is the former things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And that's what you have to tell yourself. Self-control to hold in check. You know how we always talk about we're going to check somebody? Yeah. We're going we gonna to tell them off. Tell yourself yeah. off. Yeah. Check yourself yeah. before you wreck yourself. Because guess what? You can't control nobody else. You can only control yourself. And if we spend more time and energy, God help me in here. Let me tell you what he did. I'm just talking about me. Okay? I'm going to put a little pop on that because I'm just talking about me. So when he was talking to me, he said, you know what? You know what you are guilty of doing sometimes? I said, what, Lord? He said, you look at everything somebody's doing to you. You know, you, you and, it, and that puts you in a setup for a pity party, just, just to let you know right off top. But you look at how you're treated, you look at how you're done, and you look at how you give, and you look how you're not giving to, and all of this stuff. But what are you doing? I said, what you mean what I'm doing? I didn't do nothing. It's always something for us to learn in That's every situation right. Right. that we can do differently. And one thing is, first of all, whatever I do, I better do it wholeheartedly as a service to God and not to man. Amen. I just had a conversation with a girlfriend that called me talking about all the stuff she had done for her brother. And now she need her brother to do something for her. And so she shut down on him. She's mad. She's bitter because of what she did for him. And now he can't in turn do the same thing for her. I said, well, let me tell you something. If you were doing it for the purposes of being obedient to God, you wouldn't even have this problem. We wouldn't even be having this conversation. Because you don't look for your reward. Like it says, the race is not given to the swift nor to the strong, but to the one endures to the end. It's given by God in the end. If you're looking for it now, you might be disappointed. Well, so if you're going to do it, do it for God. I don't do this to be doing it. I do it out of obedience to God. And y'all know my story about it. For the longest, I didn't want to do it. I did not because I know what it comes with. Y'all don't like that either. It comes with some stiff neck, hard head folk. Y'all don't like that either. Who don't want to be obedient? Y'all don't like that either. Who like to say who she thinks she talking to, who she thinks she is? Y'all don't like that either. Come on now. Come on. That's right. Because the truth of the matter is, you got to have somebody in ministry that compliment each other. Amen. Right? And so truly, my pastor and I compliment each other. And I respect, love, and appreciate, have learned a gazillion things from him. One being how, and he used to always tell me, in love. In love. Say it in love. In love. In love. You know. And so I always, because there is a prophetic gifting on the inside of me, and they can be very strong. Be very strong, be very direct and, and passionate. That's what people don't understand. The prophetic gifting, people are so passionate when they're operating in truth because there's things that God will show you, things you see, things you hear, and it makes you passionate about whoever you're ministering to. Yes, yes. And so the in love part I had to learn because it was just all about, hey, he told me to say it, and that's just what that is. But there are times that it still has to be strong. Yes. But it's still in love. So you got to try the spirit by the spirit. Now, pastor, everything he says is in love. Amen. Everything he says is in love. Everything he says, blessed are the peacemakers. He's a peacemaker. First of all, let me go on and get into this about this race, all right? Because I'm, I'm about to bump right into it right now. And thank you so much, pastor, for your words of wisdom last week. Worked wonderfully for me. I got two little notes with some little scribbles on them, but no whole sermon. So to God be the glory. But let's talk about the race and how you qualify. You didn't know you had to qualify, did you? Oh, yeah. You got to qualify to be in the race. Did you know you could be disqualified? Okay, because there's a scripture for that because I didn't say it and I'm going to give it to you in a minute because I didn't say you could be disqualified, but the scripture said it. And it just blew my mind because I don't even think I read that before. I'm like, my God, we can be disqualified. We already knew that 
You know, we could do so much stuff in his name and cast out devils and do all of these other things. And then he'll just turn around and say, I don't know you. So that's a lesson in itself. I'm still preaching because don't get it twisted because you can preach. You can preach the bench down. You, 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 you can stand on every chair up in here. You can call out folk names, they address, they phone number, what they had on yesterday and the day before. Uh, you can go out and evangelize and, and bring, you know, the whole house up in here. That don't mean nothing to God if you are not operating in truth. That's right. Amen. Don't mean a thing. Amen. If you're not living in this That's book right. That's right. and you're doing all that, he can use an ass. He can use whoever he wants to yeah. to get it done. Yeah. Don't get it twisted. Yeah. I heard a preacher say one time, he's the only one that you ain't going to know you fired and you still working. You still working, but you fired, baby. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, don't get that thing twisted like that, thinking you just some big shot. You just, oh, so powerful, oh, the anointed. But you going home and you just corrupting yourself with all this junk and gossip. I can't stand gossip. Amen. Because evil communication corrupts the balance. Yes, God, I'm going to say it. Ouch, ouch, ouch. You get up on the phone, you don't like something I say, so you call somebody. Mm -mm, my God. Oh, ouch. That's not, that's not God. That's not. We have to stop the chatter. This is pity pat stuff. That's what I like to call it. Pity pat stuff. Little baby stuff we do. We should be past that. Our pastor says that all the time. These are not things we have to readdress and readdress and readdress and readdress. We should be beyond this place. If you don't like, oh, did you see what sister so-and-so had on her stuff too short? Well, why don't you get off that phone, shut your mouth, and, you know, go and give and get sister something to wear. Amen. Come on now. That's right. Amen. Okay? Amen. Instead of talking about sister, That's why don't we do something about it? That may be all she had when she came. That's right. Maybe she got a little voluptuous, sir. You know, make sure you have no clothes. Okay? You don't know people's situations. This is what counseling has taught me. Stop judging people. You don't know their story. You don't know their life script. And until we God can get in and change their life script, then we got to meet them where they're at. That's right. Amen. That's just all that is to it. We got to meet them where they are. So qualifying. In this race. So I looked at 2 Timothy 4 7 and 8. And he said, Where he's fought the good fight of faith, kept the faith, finished the course, ran with patience. So if you're going to master self control, you got to fight. Yeah. You can't be willing to give up at the first sign of stormy weather. That, that's just cray cray. Okay? Thinking that everything gonna be just peaches, cream, and roses, it doesn't work that way. The minute you make a decision to do something for God, the minute you make a conscientious decision that you're gonna do what He wants you to do, how He wants you to do it, you best believe it's a fight to the finish. So there are always gonna be roadblocks and stumbling blocks to try to deter you from doing what you're supposed to be doing. But you got to be willing to fight, and you don't fight with flesh and blood, you fight with the spirit. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood. That is one of the most difficult things for us Christians to get down pat. Because we ain't got the word about arguing with the world. We just argue with each other. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. So, you know, we, don't, we always talk about what the devil did. He just sit back and like, I ain't had nothing to do with that. They did that one all by themselves. But, okay, I can just relax. Because they got to come. Yeah. We do it to ourselves. Even as African Americans, God help me. We can't help each other to come up and, and, and to do things together like some other cultures, like Hispanic cultures and, and, and the white culture, because we're too worried about, you know, oh my God, now she ain't gonna get my spot. Yeah. I ain't gonna tell her about that job till I get a check. Yeah. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. I got to look out for numero uno. And that's how it is. 
But they are a collective culture. Asians, collective culture. They believe in family. They believe in looking out for each other. I believe we're the only ones that act the plum fool and can't help each other. And you know why? Even when we try some of us, because I have, you know what we do? We don't have integrity. We do stuff. You know, we, we, we try to give jobs to, you know, our loved ones, African Americans or whatever, and, and you try to side, well, you know, you gave me this XYZ dollars, but I'm going to get the, the cheapest right here and I'm going to keep the rest of my, that kind of stuff. Yeah. We always try to look for the next come up, no. hustling and scrapping and scratching. This ain't good times. Yeah. We live in the presence of God where there's abundance. There's fullness of joy. So we don't have to hustle people to get what we need when we got a God like that that we serve. And so that scripture also said we got to keep the faith. Can't let your faith fail. Because there will always be things that try to come and tell you you're not capable of doing that. And, and what I find in this particular church specifically says the Lord <laughs> is that people don't know how so they don't do it it's not that there are people here that don't want to do it that's, that's, not, that's not it God has not shown me that but what he's shown me is there are people who have a heart they just don't know how but they won't ask either God help me <laughs> the Bible says you have not because you ask not and People don't like to read. Oh my goodness. Come on, come on, come on. People don't like to read. Come on, Pastor. Because if you don't understand how to do something, you've been given an assignment. All you got to do is Google. Amen. You ain't got the money. Google. Amen. Look it up and see how to do it. Yes. But you can't be lazy kingdom builders. Right. Ain't no, I have never read a lazy kingdom builder in my life. Yes. When Solomon was working on that wall, he didn't let nothing stop him. Uh-huh. Yes. He was building. Yes. And people tried to tell him, come down. And de- now, I'm not going to come down and deal with foolishness. Yes. I got to keep working. That's right. That's right. That's right. Yes. You got to be a kingdom builder with a focus. Yes. With a goal and a plan. Yes. 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 And God gives the vision. Yes. He gives you the vision. Yes. You got to make it plain. You got to write it down. Yes. You got to work it. Yes. Nothing just falls from the sky and says, ah, oh, and then you can just do it all. If that was right. the case, everybody would be doing anything. Right. Mm-hmm. That's right. But it takes hard work and dedication, which is self-discipline. Yes, yes. I could have never finished school in the time that I finished because when I I initially told people when I wanted to get done, they were like, you ain't going to be able to finish that fast. But how many know if God be for you, who can be against you? <laughs> and when you focused on that race and you know what the finish line will bring, because I'm focusing on what I want, which is at the end, not what I don't want, which may be in the middle and in the beginning, I focus on the end. Yeah. And what does Pastor say? If the end is well, all is well. All is well. So that's the next one. Run with patience. Run with patience. Understanding that it's okay. That sometimes you may get frustrated while you run in this race. But you don't focus on the frustration. You use it as fuel. Yes, yes. Because you know the enemy seeks to devour. Yes. He, he seeks to stop you from what right. God has called you to do. Yes. That's right. yes. Yes. So a lot of times people who run with patience know that with patience, grace is not far away. Amen. So if you make a mistake, don't let the mistake trip you up to fall down while you run in the race and you don't get back up no more. Amen. That's right. Mm-mm. You just have to say, I renounce my agreement with the enemy. Yeah. And Father, I align myself with your word and your truth and keep going. Yeah. Because otherwise he's set up to just try to beat you down and tear you down and make you think you can't never do it no more. Yeah. And then you'll just quit. Amen. And we talk about this over and over and over again. And I'm going to say it again. I don't understand when we go through stuff, the last place we don't go is church. I I promise we could be going through all kind of stuff at home and stuff like that but we going to work 
Yeah. We going to work. Yeah. I don't know if it's because you think your job, your the, the little paycheck you get is your true provider, which that's a lie. That's right. But but the minute something going on, you can't go to church. I don't understand. I don't understand. I mean, God is always the one that gets it when we feeling like we going through. Yes. Yes. He gets the short end. Yes. Just like we always talking about the, the Lord calf died. You know, he always the one. No calf died, Jesus. I'm sorry. You know my heart. <laughs> he said, yeah, I know it. And it's nasty and it's terrible and it's corrupt. And that's why you need to be up in this hospital. So we got to stop. Stop and reflect where we are, where we want to be. That's not just uh, in ministry, in life, period. There are, th nothing is t impossible for God. There's so many great things that he wants to do, how we can infiltrate the earth and be an influence in the earth. But we got to keep being stuck in these four walls trying to continue to give you the same thing and hope you get it. Come on. And just be like, Lord Jesus, please. If there be one, if there be one, Lord. <laughs> if there be one, let him come. But we got to finish the course. By all means, we got to get it done. Now, in order to qualify in the race, you got to strip off unnecessary weight. And Hebrews 12 and 1 says, Wherefore, seeing we are also compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight. Yes. And the sin, it didn't just say lay aside weight, you know, yes. burdens and stuff you carry, and the sin. That means we need some self control. Right. Which doth so easily beset us. And it says, And let us run. Race is everywhere. Yes. I don't know if you realize that race is everywhere in scripture to encourage you about the race you run. <laughs> Let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Right. Number two, run with endurance and active, persistent the race that is set before us. Number three, accept correction from your trainer. <laughs> That one right there gonna preach. That will preach all day by itself. And a bunch of ouches. I'm just talking about me, but let me just share with you. When I was first being mentored to do God knows what, because I didn't know then. I had no idea where this was going. But I thought it was just praise and worship. And you know, I knew that God had gifted me in the gift of the prophetic. So I just thought, you know, I'd be doing those things and I'm just being equipped and being trained for that. Well, being trained, because she never had uh, a spiritual daughter before, and, and she never mentored before. So you know how you get your first child, and, and, and you, you're not trying to be hard on them, and be, but you just want them to be the best. Yeah. So sometimes you could be too stern and too hard and, and, and too rigid because, you know, you just want the best for them. But we all make mistakes as parents, yeah. you know. Yeah. But with your first child, they get the brunt of everything. Yeah. And then by the time you have your second and third, you be like, oh, okay, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, uh, sick, you know, but, but that, that's how it was with me. And so I was like, dang, why I got to be so harsh? And don't ask why. Uh, and I'm just trying to ask why to get a better understanding of why I need to do it. So if I'm doing it or something, I know. Just do what I said to do. Yeah. You know, that's, <laughs> that's what I did. Yeah. I'd be like, oh, okay. Jesus. Okay. Oh, Lord. Yeah. And I was young, and so when she do that kind of stuff, and I love her pieces for that. I thank God for that. It, it equipped me. I beat my body. I beat my body to put it under subjection, and that's what it was teaching me to do. I didn't understand it at the time, but Paul said he literally beat his body till it's black and blue, the, the uh, Greek version says, to make sure that his body is under subjection to God. Yes, yes. And so what I thought was brutal and painful and just downright mean, 
was the best thing that ever happened to me because now I could sit up under somebody that you know gives instructions like that do this and because she would just belt it out do this and do that and do that and come back and do that I'd be like wait a minute what uh uh that's that was too fast I didn't get all that I said do this do that and do that you know and so you know there'd be times that I have an attitude you know, the next day, and she could feel when my spirit was older. It was just nasty. It was terrible. <laughs> you know, because I felt some kind of way when what you have to understand is not about you. Yeah. You got to, let, let's first of all get past this point. Yeah. Try to spirit by the spirit. If you know the spirit of this person, why are we having to go through this over and over yes. and try to tell you, right. you know, what the intent of the person's heart is that's doing it? I, I don't understand why we got to keep trying to help you understand yeah. if you know the intent of my heart is kingdom if I live kingdom I breathe kingdom I speak kingdom then that's what kingdom is Amen. period Amen. Amen. so so the the scripture told me uh, in Hebrews 12 4 7 and 11 don't don't despise being corrected it said if ye endure chastening God dealing with you as with sons so that's telling me right off top if you can't deal with it you know and you refuse it you know and you resist it what well, it says it right after that for what son is he whom the father chasteneth not mm. but if ye be without chastisement well whereof all are partakers then all ye now i didn't say this are bastards and not sons that's the uh hebrew i mean that's the greek version uh meaning bastards and not sons Furthermore, we have had fathers of the flesh correct us, and we gave them reverence. Mm -hmm. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the Father of spirits and live? For verily I say, for a few days chasten us after their own pleasure, but he for our profit. It's for our good. It's for our benefit. For that we might be partakers of his holiness. Hallelujah. So, when God places leadership, we all know the scripture that says all authority is governed by God. Right. So it's not just saying when Jesus chastises you in your private time. So don't be trying to tell me nothing about that. Yeah. Come on now. If the Lord has given the pastors the authority, which he has, yes. to say something to you, yeah. and you know that it's coming from love, and you know that it lines up with scripture, just simply obey just simply obey. That, that's it. That's all. That, there's, there's nothing else to be said about that. So now the disqualifications. And like I said, I was going to help you and I am. 2 Timothy 2 and 5 says an athlete is not crowned unless he competes or in the Greek strives according to the rules. I didn't say it. You don't get your cr no, no cross, no crown. If you can't deal with the things in this world and you just ready to quit and just lay it down, roll over, play dead, all that kind of stuff, there's no crown. That's just the bottom line. It's to the one that endures. It's to the one that fights the good fight. It's for the one that don't look to the left, don't look to the right, but keep straight and keep focused on what God is saying. So, number one, for the disqualifiers, not staying in your own lane. That was the first thing he told me. Stay in your lane, stay in your lane, stay in your lane. And I'm like, what you mean stay in your lane? When he says stay in your lane, we talk about the gifts of the spirit and we know that God has given each of us gifts of the spirit. Some apostles, some prophets, some preachers, some exhortation, the gift of giving and all of those wonderful things. So if he's given me, and I'm just going to talk about me, he's given me the gift to pastor, he's given me the gift of the prophetic, gift of discernment, gift of wisdom, uh, exhortation. And so those are my gifts. I have the gift of giving too, but not as strong as maybe somebody else in here. So, if I see Deaconess giving to somebody, because that's a gift of hers, I'm not going to get mad at her for being a giver because that's where she's strongest in. Yes. Right? Amen. But my discernment may kick in and say, just make sure you watch 
how you give it. Because you have to be prudent concerning your, your finances because there are people that will continue to ask for stuff over and over and over and they're not doing what they should be doing. And so you're not doing any service to them. You're enabling them. So that's how you see how the gifts can kind of complement each other. But we still staying in our own lane. I'm not telling her not to do it. I'm just kind of giving her direction about doing it. And even with, you know, uh, I don't know, gift of, uh, I don't know, exhortation. That person means that they know how to exhort. They know how to magnify. They know how to speak well of God. They know how to tap you into the presence of the Lord and, and all of these wonderful things. But if that's not your gift, but you sitting out here complaining about, well, I didn't get nothing. I like Pastor, I didn't get nothing out of it. <laughs> but you didn't put nothing in it. So, you, and, and, and the thing is, staying in your lane is I can't necessarily tell you how to not do what you're supposed to do because you're supposed to do it because you're doing it for God. That's right. That's right. So I know what he strengthened me to do. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to stay in my lane right there. Amen. I'm going to park my hat right there. Amen. Okay? I know that evangelism, that's not, now, that's not my gift. Now, I could operate in it if I needed to. But it's not my main gift. So I'm going to stay in my lane. I ain't got to be over there trying to do that because that's not what I do. And I'm going to respect. Yo, oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. And I'm going to respect what that person's gift is that does flow in that gift. And help compliment and help in any way I can while still staying in my lane. Number two, don't look back while you're running. Philippians 3 and 13 says, forgetting those things which are behind me. So while you're running your race, uh, you can become distracted if you're looking back. So we don't want to be found guilty of looking back and allow the enemy to have us to look back at something that we've done in our past. Yes. Because what we did in our past has no, no bearing on our present. That's right. That's right. That's right. Amen. We only go by what God says. And he said he justified those he called. So when he tries to bring that guilt and that shame to try to tell you, because that's exactly what he tries to do is guilt and shame. Those are two main things that God tries to do to a believer who has his heart. They try to shame you. The enemy tries to shame you into believing that you're not worthy to do what you're doing. Well, we all know that we're not worthy. Yeah. <laughs> but not to the point of, well, I'm just no good. And I just make too many mistakes. And, you know, I don't want to play with God and all that. We don't have time for that. Right. We don't need bottles in here. This is meat time. You got to know how to shake him off. And the only way to shake him off is to cast him down. Don't give him place. And, and, and I always tell my clients, don't let him have a whole conversation in your head. Well, how many seconds is it, Pastor, you say? Six seconds. And I have clients that they have a whole dialogue. You done let him have a whole dialogue in your brain. And so guess what he does after that? Then you in agreement because you sat there and you listened. Well, you know what? He right. So sure right. Yeah, I, I, you right. I can't do that. So you don't, you don't talk yourself out of it before it's even begun. And so you have to just speak over yourself, encourage yourself in the Lord. The only way to do that is to know the word. In your race, you got to have his word. That is your food. That's your, that's your nourishment. I know that you know when you run in a race, you got to train. Yes. And so when you're training, you got to make sure you're eating right. Yes. You can't be heavy in the spirit trying to run. It don't work. So that's that weight. Lay aside every weight. You got to get rid of that weight. You know, before you're even able to run, but but then you gotta have the nourishment that your spiritual body needs, and that's the word of God. And you gotta meditate on that thing. What? Day and night. 
Day and night. Day and night. And then, of course, we know eating right because our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Now we're talking about natural food. We don't know what the Lord is going to want to do in us or through us. For me, uh, because of the gifting, I could be, you know, having to stoop down to the floor, jump up, run. I don't know. But if I'm heavy, I can't do it. And not only that, when you have a certain amount of weight on you, it brings about, uh, it brings the serotonin levels down and all of the endorphins and all of that that your body needs to feel good. Yeah. So if you don't feel good half the time and you just, uh, you know, dragging in life, then it might be because you need to watch your diet. That's right. Because a lot of people don't know that certain foods have something to do with that mentally, because it does. Right. Right. So that's important and you need to be watchful of what you are putting into your body. Amen. Amen. And number three, don't wrestle with flesh and blood. That'll disqualify you. We already talked about that. So staying in your own lane, not looking back, not wrestling with flesh and blood, and then not submitting to correction, that will also disqualify you. And then the last one, it says, voluntarily lead a race and return to finish. Mm -mm. Uh, no, we can't do that. We can't do that. <laughs> we can't be doing that. And you know what I'm talking about. Well, you know, I'm going to just dip in and dip out. Let me go on over here. Let me answer that call right there. It's 3 a.m. You done left your race. And then you're going to have a dash to try to come back to my praise the Lord. Uh-uh, it don't work like that. Your spirit ain't going to even let you connect like that. It's just not going to do it. You cannot leave your race to dip in and dip out and come back. You disqualified. You're going to either be, now let me give you scripture to help you. You're going to either be hot or what? I didn't say it. Because if you look warm, he's going to what? Okay, well, that's resolved. I didn't say it. I didn't say it. So stop dipping and dabbing. Dipping in, dipping out. Self-control is knowing yourself. That's the bottom line. When you know yourself, you know. That talks about, again, the boundaries, the limitations. When you know yourself. If you see that call, like I do. Amen. You know what? No. The history has been that you call them to start something. No. Mm -mm. No, no. Fool me once. Fool me twice. Fool me three times. Shame on me. Nah, we ain't gonna get to do that. Mm -mm. No God. Mm -mm. Oh, you calling at two in the morning? One o'clock? Even if it's midnight? Nah. Mm -mm. No, if, if, if I can't be seen in the day, I sure I can't be seen in the dark. I know my word. Hello. Mm -mm. No, ma'am. Nope, not going to do it. And if the conversation look like it's going in another direction, passed off and tells us to keep our mouth shut. Because you know what? If you don't understand my words, silence. Don't understand my words. <laughs> Let me get back to you. Yeah. Let me get back to you on that. <laughs> Let me think about that one. That was a good one. I actually used that one day. I said, mm, I didn't know that. Oh, let me think about that. And I was just like, Chaplin. Okay, whatever. <laughs> I ain't got time. But in all seriousness, also self-control means having humor too. You, you got to have it. I talked about that last night. Laughter is good medicine. There are so many times where, you know, the enemy will want to make you act a fool and go off or something. And then the Lord will just remind me of something so funny. <laughs> and I might just bust out popcorn. <laughs> That's my safe word. Be like, girl, what you talking about? Oh, girl, anyway, we moving on to something else. She don't even know what I'm talking about. Girl, popcorn. You smell popcorn? Anything. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I just find safe words and I just might blurt it out. 
And then that just makes them think, what? Wait a minute, pop, what we talking about? Oh, girl, I don't know. But anyway, did you see that last night? We moving on to a whole nother subject. Because I'm trying to keep the peace. Because the Bible says uh, that as much as it depends on me, I have to live peaceably among all men. So you, you got to be wise and you, you, you got to live life to the fullest and enjoy it. Have fun and, and enjoy this journey with God because, you know, so many times we, we, we think about getting to the end and hurrying up and getting there that we don't enjoy the ride. The simple pleasures. The little things that God does along the way to let you know, hey, baby, I got you. This ain't nothing. Don't worry about it. Don't even trip. I got you. Because you're taking care of my business. And as long as you take care of my business, I take care of your business. So God wants us all to be masters of self-control. So you got to make sure that you keep your flesh under subjection. Amen. Amen. As we close, there may be one. And um, I've already repented, so that's the only reason why I ain't coming down there with y'all. Because <laughs> we all, no, nobody's exempt from this, okay? <laughs> we can all say something we shouldn't have said. Or something, okay? But I'm not ready to repent because I got this word first, so I ain't coming down. <laughs> but if there's one who know without a doubt that they need the Holy Spirit's help, we can't do this without the Holy Spirit. Apart from God, we can do nothing, but with him we can do all things because he's our strength. And um, I just thank God for the Holy Ghost that when Jesus left us, he didn't leave us powerless. He didn't leave us without a sense of direction. He didn't leave us without hope, comfort, equipment to equip us. The Holy Spirit is the driving force within us. Amen. Or he needs to be. And if he is not, then you can ask him. Yes. Ask and you shall receive. Yes. 